Welcome to Good Libations, our show about mixology or bartending, because the term mixology is starting to take on a bit of a shade of meaning of pretentiousness, so sometimes I revert to bartending, very simply. But the thing that we definitely want to do is we don't want to start using cheap shortcuts like mixes and drinks that lack innovation or that are weak and lack character and are not interesting to either look at or drink. So thus the term mixology was born. And a few words too about things that we want to do if we're going to be doing a mixology event. And I've mentioned this before, but keep the ice very, very cold because if your ice starts to melt, it's going to dilute the drinks and the drinks are going to become weak and nobody wants that or appreciates that. It'll compromise the liquor and it'll compromise any of those fresh ingredients that you put in there and thus ruin the drink. And also too, if we don't have a bar sink available, we should have a bowl of clean water, some hand sanitizer, some paper towels available because keeping our hands clean, our equipment clean and everything else is very important. It's just as important as if we were making meals because we don't want to contaminate drinks, we don't want to make people sick, or we don't want people watching us and think, oh, that's terrible. So hygiene is very important if we're going to do mixology. Now, again, we're making drinks that are compatible with the winter season and all the events that people have that involve the winter season. So these particular drinks, as I mentioned last episode, are not drinks that are made with coffee or hot liquids, like, you know, traditional drinks for winter season or autumn are. You don't, you don't have to go that route. These are drinks that perhaps are a little bit heavier in terms of specific gravity. They might have a bit more spirits in them, a bit stronger, but they're not drinks that necessarily have to be hot or sickly sweet because these drinks are a bit sweeter than what I typically make, but they're not cloying and sickening. And anyway, this next drink that we're gonna use vanilla vodka with again as a base, I'm gonna go ahead and use in a shaker. So I'm gonna put ice in the shaker right now. And again, if we don't have a bar refrigerator that's available to us on the premises, at least make sure that the medium in which we store the ice, that the ice is kept cold and that it doesn't melt and become dilute. And as I did in the last episode, I'm gonna make just sample size drinks, not full drinks, but proportion wise, being that I free pour anyway, you should be able to sort of guesstimate how much to put in the shaker for a full size drink versus the smaller version. So right now, we're gonna go ahead and put in the vanilla vodka. And typically, again, this is less than what I would pull in, put in for a full size drink. And this particular drink does incorporate Kahlua. But you could also use cream de coco if you don't wanna use Kahlua. You could use Tia Maria. You could use white cream de coco if you want. But the only thing is then you're gonna get a drink that doesn't have any variegations in color. And that can be kind of boring. So we're gonna use Kahlua. And you wanna put in a bit less than the vanilla vodka because you don't want it to overwhelm the vanilla vodka. So anyway, it's in there. So we're gonna go ahead and shake it now. And we're gonna use again this particular glass because for display purposes, it's an attractive looking glass and it works very well for this drink. So on goes the lid and I'm gonna shake it a bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and dispense it in the glass. And it will have kind of a tan type hue to it because of the Kahlua. And with what I do with this drink, it's gonna be, it's gonna look like it's similar to 
a white Russian or a Brandy Alexander, but the flavor is entirely different because of the vanilla vodka. But again, I'm gonna to endeavor to try to do a float of cream on the top, so bear with me as I shake it up and we'll see if it works because this can be dicey at times. And as I mentioned in the other episodes that I've done, if you're afraid you're not gonna get a float of heavy cream, please do not resort to aerosol whipped cream. You can whip it up a bit and you can spoon it on. But the traditional way of doing it is to invert a teaspoon, hold it at a slight angle and pour the cream over the top. And most of the time you're gonna get a float. And indeed we did get a pretty good float this time. If I was using the full glass, we would have gotten a perfect float. And what I generally like to do with this drink is I like to top it with a mixture that I make myself of cinnamon, cocoa, and a little bit of sugar, just to give some eye appeal. Some people like to put nutmeg on it, that's okay, but I think nutmeg has a certain bitterness that doesn't go well with the Kahlua. If you use cream to cocoa, it might go better. But that line of demarcation where it doesn't float into the alcohol, that's what we're after with the inverted teaspoon because it looks better, the eye appeal is there, plus it tastes enormously better because you're drinking it through the cream so you get a different um, feel and a different taste. Let me go ahead and see if this is good. Oh yeah, that is quite nice. And again, you can taste the vanilla vodka. The vanilla vodka is not obliterated by the Kahlua, and that's what we want. If we're gonna make this type of a drink, we don't wanna obliterate the base liquor, which in this case is vanilla vodka. We wanna make sure that it keeps its place, even with the Kahlua there, because the Kahlua is a stronger tasting liquor. But make no mistake, you will miss it if you try to use regular vodka or something else because it is no substitute for vanilla vodka. And I mentioned before that vanilla vodka is starting to get difficult to find. It used to be pretty ubiquitous. You could walk into stores, regular grocery stores, and find it in the liquor section, but that's not so true anymore. Now, in many cases, we have to go to so-called liquor merchants to get vanilla vodka. But nevertheless, this is a worthwhile drink, and again, you could do other things to tweak it if you wish. You could even muddle raspberries in it, which sounds very, very odd, but raspberries with coffee or chocolate are a natural. So it's a very worthwhile drink. And again, I'm Ethel Andrews, and I appreciate you tuning in to another episode of Good Libations, which is our show about mixology, about making truly fine drinks without resorting to using artificial ingredients or mixes. And it's important to do that because that's making drinks by rote. That's like paint by numbers. There's no innovation, there's no creativity. We haven't put our mark or our signature on it. And also, you can create drinks yourself. There, there is unlimited varieties of drinks that you can make with all the liquors that there are and all the distilled spirits that we have. You can make unlimited drinks, thousands of different types of drinks. So don't be afraid to experiment and don't be unsure of your own skills, abilities, and palate. Get innovative. And thank you again for tuning into Good Libations. And as I always mention at the end of my programs, let's be responsible. Let's keep our community safe and well spoken of by not getting people intoxicated at our events and making sure that people have a designated driver. Thank you and have a good evening. Goodbye.